If you've ever Googled the Open Web Application Security Project, you might receive the following from Wikipedia. Whilst this might be accurate, OWASP does produce freely available material, but I feel there's more to OWASP than what's depicted in Wikipedia. I'm one of the organizers of OWASP San Francisco, and I've been involved in OWASP since 2012. Over those years, I've experienced what makes OWASP great, and today I want to break that down in this video. If you were to ask me what I liked about OWASP, it would be the community. OWASP wouldn't be what it is today without the diverse community that backs it. My first experience with OWASP was when I was a young university student in the heart of Leeds in the United Kingdom. The Leeds chapter introduced me to persons with different backgrounds, which gave me new ways of thinking and create friendships that I still cherish today. Now Leeds isn't the only place that OWASP exists. Let's take a look at some of those communities. OWASP has global chapters all over the world in different cities. Here are some of the amazing chapters I have been to. The London chapter is a thriving community that have yearly CTFs, developer days, and monthly talks from security professionals. OWASP Portland is another awesome chapter that provide developer training days, host a security podcast where they invite security professionals to talk about different topics and also host monthly meetings. If you've ever stepped foot in the Bay Area, you get to experience the culture it provides. OWASP supports the North Bay and the South Bay. And as one of the organizers, I feel very biased since I feel we have world-class speakers, some of the best physical, but also virtually hosted hacker days and an amazing supportive leadership. There are over 260 groups related to OWASP. So why don't you check out the chapters page and see if there is a local or virtual chapter near you. Before COVID-19, the application security community would meet yearly in different locations to participate in what I like to think as hallway con at Global AppSec. Imagine being at the beach in Israel or California or even in a colder climate by the docks of Amsterdam or Belfast, where you're able to talk to other people in your field about application security topics, learn about interesting things while also getting to experience different cultures along the way. There are usually fairly priced in-person trainings for those looking to up their game in specific subject areas. There are usually subject matter experts at hand to teach you from the ground up or take your knowledge from intermediate to more advanced. All conferences and chapters are intended to be vendor neutral, so you experience raw, enthusiastic talks from persons with a variety of backgrounds. I always walk out with global AppSec and general OWASP conferences learning something new. You can still experience global events by visiting the OWASP events page. We may not be able to learn physically currently, so come join the virtual conferences and trainings that they provide until we're able to see each other again in person. OWASP has awesome open source flagship projects, which offer various ways for persons or organizations to learn about application security and even improve their security knowledge. There is a lot OWASP has to offer, but here are the five projects I think you'll love. If you are new to security or wanted to know where to get started, you'd probably start with the OWASP Top 10. The OWASP Top 10 is an awareness piece that enables developers to understand the common security issues that generally exist in applications. Now, the reason why I like it is that it's not overwhelming. It only has 10 focus areas, and these areas break into things like injection, broken authentication, and cross-site scripting. The data normally which backs the OWASP top 10 is provided from researchers, bug bounty companies, and security organizations which help define the roadmap for what should be included. When the OWASP top 10 gets updated, it's outlined on what's changed, what gets removed, and why things have been added. It's a great place to get started because it defines how an application is vulnerable, the exploitability, detectability, and business impact the issue generally causes, how to prevent the issue, 
and examples of how the issues are usually introduced. The OWASP Top 10 is a great primer, but developers and security experts sometimes need to dig deeper than just the general problem statement. And this is where the OWASP Cheat Sheet comes in. Our brains cannot retain every little bit of information on all topics, so therefore, we should cheat. The OWASP Cheat Sheet is a great resource when you need to understand a particular domain. The web pages are easy to follow and they contain guidelines of the general problem, snippets of code generally defining the problem, providing best practices on how to prevent from introducing the issue, and even language-specific guidance tailored for languages such as Java, .NET, and also JavaScript. Now the best thing about the cheat sheet is that if something is outdated or is missing, you can simply make a new pull request, introducing that feature to continue to evolve the wide collection of knowledge that already exists within these pages. Okay, so you have an idea of the types of issues that usually exist through the OWASP Top 10. You have the cheat sheet that gives you knowledge on how to prevent those issues from occurring, but sometimes it's important to physically see those issues in action. This is where my favorite flagship project comes into play. The OWASP Juice Shop is a modern web application which uses popular technologies like Node.js, Angular, NoSQL, and SQL. It's not just a vulnerable application. This is an application that is fully testable with unit tests, written professionally, and when new code is written, it's reviewed by the core team which gives you that true showcase of what an application may actually look like in production. The best thing about G-Shop is that it's easily deployable either locally or within the cloud. G-Shop is great when you want to learn how to perform a code review. Since it's open source, you have access to the raw code to see what's happening under the hood. You can learn how to follow the data flow in an application from source to sync, where a vulnerability starts and where a vulnerability ends. In this case, you can see on line 29, there is likely SQL injection as the source is the request.body.email and it's calling sqlize.query, which takes user input as part of the SQL query. You can also learn dynamic testing as you can easily deploy this locally or in the cloud to find bugs manually or using automated tools. You can verify that the vulnerability we just identified by spinning up the environment and perform dynamic testing to validate the issue. Or you can just look at this application from a no-code perspective and see what you find. Now that we have a vulnerable application to start finding vulnerabilities in, of course you can mess around with the inputs in the browser, you can also view the source. But the true magic to web security testing is when you're able to intercept the traffic before it gets sent to the web server, allowing you to modify values on the fly. Zap is a proxy which allows you to intercept and modify HTTP requests. It supports requests such as web sockets. It has awesome features such as spidering, where you can spider the application to try and identify more web pages to test. It allows actively scanning requests to automatically include payloads to try and find vulnerabilities. Look, it even found that SQL injection we've been talking about. Zap even allows you to import GraphQL schemas, OpenAPI, and WSDL definitions to be able to perform scanning against your API queries. The one amazing thing that the Zap team has introduced is the heads-up display, which allows you to do all of the amazing features inside the browser itself. You can see requests, you can modify those requests on the fly, and run commands directly to the Zap application, which I think is truly awesome. We're nearly there from covering an application on all fronts. Generic issue types through the OWASP Top 10, how to fix the issues through the cheat sheet, how to find issues from either a static or dynamic state through Juishop, either looking at the open source code or using Zap to dynamically test the application. The last thing we need to consider is the dependencies that Juishop runs on. 
Most modern applications have an abundance of third-party libraries that are utilized. We need to consider, do any of the vulnerabilities live inside the dependencies themselves? The OWASP Dependency Check is a dependency scanning tool that supports various languages such as JavaScript, Java, .NET, Ruby. And it will even look at zip files and WAR files, etc. It even has modules for CI-CD pipelines to automatically scan through Jenkins or through the build process, such as using the Gradle plugin or Ant task. The tool is extremely easy to run through the command line and it produces an easy to digest HTML output, but there are other formats that you might prefer. There are other amazing projects that OWASP have that I think you should take a look at, such as AMAS to perform reconnaissance against an organization, the OWASP Application Security Verification Standard, which can be used as a baseline to understand your application security posture, and finally OWASP SAM, which stands for the Software Assurance Maturity Model, which can be used to help measure your organizational security posture. So why don't you check out the OWASP project list and see if there's something that might be useful to you or your organization. In summary, OWASP is a community which is built and maintained by enthusiastic volunteers. There are global meetups and conferences and widely used, actively maintained open source flagship projects. If you're an organization, consider sponsoring OWASP. It gives you benefits and access to the wide community that is involved. As an individual, you can become a member. Membership gives you discounts for all upcoming events and trainings, a pretty swanky OWASP email address, but most importantly, the ability to vote in the upcoming OWASP Global Board elections.